the early hours of Sunday, April 3rd, 2022. Sacramento's downtown entertainment and restaurant district is filled with people enjoying unseasonably warm early spring weather. The peace of that early Sunday morning suddenly shattered by gunfire. Within seconds, downtown Sacramento becomes the epicenter of a mass shooting. While Sacramento police and fire respond to the scene, the team at iHeart's KFBK goes into action. With corporate protocols still in place, working remotely, the limited staff went to work in the early hours of that Sunday morning. As the sun came up, KFBK gave Sacramento the first information about the early morning shooting. Breaking news first on KFBK News Radio. It's 702 Sunday morning. I'm Bill White on KFBK News Radio, along with KFBK's John Harper, our continuing coverage. Here's what we know so far six dead, 10 to 15 injured, and in a uh, shooting overnight in uh, downtown Sacramento. KFBK's John McGinnis is standing by. John Harper, why don't you, before we go to John, uh, give us a, a rundown of that timeline of uh, specifically what we know so far. And we have new information coming in here right after 7 o'clock this morning from Sacramento Police. Six dead, now 10 wounded. 10, that was originally 15. It's now 10 wounded in that mass shooting that happened early this morning. And the area, again, from 9th to 13th Streets between J and L remains closed off and we're monitoring the live feeds from the vantage of L and 10th streets where we see a number of evidence markers and here's what happened this is uh, almost exactly five hours ago as we go on the air live here on KFBK 201 this morning first reports to Sacramento police shots fired near El Santo at L and 10th street 208 Sacramento police call in all units by 211 Sacramento fire is on the scene they are administering CPR to some of the first victims at 2 22 this morning, Sacramento Fire and Sacramento Police report multiple deaths, 10 victims, 3 dead. 227 this morning, K Street, there's a gun recovered. It's next door to Mother's Restaurant at 246 this morning. More victims found over on J Street and also reports of victims walking in to local hospitals just before 7 o'clock in our continuing live coverage on KFBK. You heard some raw video that has been posted to Twitter that will be uh, used so many times in reporting this story was shot just moments after two o'clock this morning and you'll see in the video a fight that has erupted we don't know whether or not that's connected to the shooting but then you hear the sound of automatic gunfire This is KFBK News Radio continuing coverage with KFBK program director Bill White anchoring. Former Sacramento County Sheriff John McGinnis gave perspective on the story. We're also seeing on social media, and uh, we'll bring John McGinnis in on the conversation, a number, and, and as people are arising, a number of people are checking to see if they're hearing from loved ones, and, and some of them are saying they are not, and they're concerned that they might be um, a victim of this. Just a, a tragic time, John. Absolutely a tragic time, and as uh, we've regrettably alluded, uh, that number could change. It's uh, not like it's certainly not going to go down. As I see it now, 16 people have been shot, six of whom have perished. And as you can imagine, uh, people who are, they believe their loved one was uh, in that area last night, uh, recreating in the, uh, in the downtown area. Uh, they've not yet heard from them. Obviously, panic is setting in. So that you have all of the other uh, disciplines uh, involved in this. The coroner's office has an obligation to identify the fallen and make the appropriate notifications. And that might possibly be what uh, uh, Chief Lister is uh, is waiting for because uh, she cannot uh, release the names of, uh, of uh, the deceased until that those notifications have been made by the coroner's office. And so you have a, a multitude of disciplines involved. Obviously, even uh, UC Davis is a big trauma center with a tremendous capacity. Uh, I assure you these people, patients had to be taken to different hospitals because of the, the sheer magnitude. And so a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts, a lot of responsibility. And at 2 o'clock in the morning or shortly thereafter, uh, when staffing may be uh, not at optimum, there's a host of challenges involved in this. Of course, we heard that uh, Twitter video, and it's the Twitter video where you hear automatic gunfire. Those first police units arriving on the scene between 2.01 and 2.08 a.m. Obviously, those police officers are trying to secure the scene and get to the first victims. Then the CSI unit comes in. We're looking at live pictures of the CSI unit walking up and down L Street and through the entire area. Explain what the jurisdictional duties are from those first police officers who come to secure 
secure the scene, maintain the scene? And what does CSI now do with the evidence that they're finding over those two city blocks? First and foremost, always the fundamental mission is to save lives. So get there in sufficient time to... Uh, to, to you know, stop a continuing threat if it's still there, if there's still somebody armed and using a weapon to destroy life, stop that person. Put it, I find them and put a stop to that. Then render aid to the fallen. And all the while, be mindful of the fact that, again, that scene becomes critical evidence. Uh, CSI is the next band of report of uh, responders coming in, and their job is to, to work in conjunction with patrol officers. Who It first starts with them because they want to begin the process of preserving, keep people out of the area, identify uh, the very, very obvious elements of evidence uh, with markers, uh, and then allow further uh, examination of the scene to take place so potentially additional items of evidence can be identified. And then CSI comes in with their purpose of ultimately they will collect that evidence, but before they do so, uh, it has to be uh, properly memorialized through photography and diagrams, uh, which includes uh, measurements, uh, triangulation, and uh, putting all those pieces in the, uh, having the ability, establishing the, the the, the future ability to put those puzzle pieces together. Sacramento County District Attorney Anne Marie Schubert joining us live here on KFBK uh, News Radio. Um, Ms. Schubert, uh, your reaction to uh, what's happened uh, overnight and uh, in this morning? Well, good morning. I think, like many other folks, it's just jaw dropping to hear of such a horrific crime in our community. And, and you know, as a career prosecutor, Having sat with families that have lost their loved ones, this hits at the heart of many people that woke up this morning to find out that their loved one has been killed and um, their lives will never be the same. Reset for you. It's 930 on KFBK News Radio. This is KFBK News Radio continuing coverage. This is a story that is seven and a half hours old. The breaking news from downtown Sacramento in the 1000 block of K Street. Six dead, 16 wounded. The mass shooting happening early this morning and police chief Kathy Lester asking for your help. We are asking for the public's help in helping us to identify uh, the suspects in this and provide any information that you can to help us solve this. And a large portion of downtown is closed between 9th and 13th Street. Courtesy of Broadcastify, this was the scanner traffic to Sacramento Police. 10th and J, we need probably about another 5 or 10 officers. ABC's Alex Stone covering the story as well. This, of course, is the top national story, and he says, at least for right now, this is a local investigation. We know that uh, the, the feds at this point do not seem like the that they're involved, that their assistance, at least from the FBI and others, uh, that they're being requested, uh, that that would indicate that this is a, a local scene, one that seems to be a uh, crime that wouldn't be terrorism. We're only seven and a half hours into this investigation. Apparently, those who survived are being interviewed at the hospital. Five victims admitted to UC Davis. We do not know their condition. Presumably, they're well enough to speak with police. We have heard from family members, those being allowed behind police tape this morning. And we would assume that some of those family members, based on how they're speaking, those are family members of loved ones who perhaps were wounded or may even lost their lives in the shooting that took place about seven and a half hours ago and the message that we have heard so far from family members is one of peace and calm and tranquility here in the city of sacramento as we deal with this mass shooting again six dead 15 total wounded that's what we know as of 9 39 this morning bill we have on the line pastor michael o'malley from the sacramento cathedral of blessed sacrament which is literally a block away from this area uh pastor o'reilly uh, you're on kfbk give us uh, a sense of uh, your vantage point and uh, react to what has happened? Well, I um, woke up this morning. I, I really didn't uh, realize there had been a uh, shooting. I woke up at two, heard some sounds, uh, un not uncommon to hear uh, yelling and sirens downtown on a Saturday or early Sunday morning. So I didn't think too much of it. And stepping outside this morning, I saw the tape all around our cathedral and realized, oh, there was a bad incident. So right now it's very quiet out there. Um, we we are having our our masses our services here, but um, uh, I'm certainly praying for Sacramento. Obviously, Brother O'Malley, we're in the Lenten season right now. It's a season of penance and a season of fasting as well as we prepare to go into uh, next week, the holiest week of the church year, and that's Holy Week. And of course, Christ going up Mount Calvary and dying for our sins. Lent is a time to grow in holiness together. What would your message be, be they Roman Catholic or not, in terms of peace amidst all of this violence in the city of Sacramento? Well, certainly we should uh, never 
never give up hope or, or see these dark moments as, you know, sort of an end time or, you know, that this is it. As a believer in God and certainly in Christ, uh, he conquers all and he is raising us up. That is the whole point of uh, that Holy Week and Lent is to recognize our own behaviors that need to change and improve and our care for one another as well as our desire to really um, point you know, to the hope that exists and the love that exists in the person of our Savior. We're going to go now to the uh, news line and Captain Keith Wade uh, from the Sacramento Fire Department. Captain Wade, uh, you're on KFBK. Give us uh, the latest on the uh, medical response. What came in as a single shooting quickly evolved into a multi-casualty incident that becomes an incident management issue for the fire department as we respond. What was very interesting to me as I was on duty last night downtown staffing a fire engine, was we are doing a, a, a drill currently in an active shooter scenarios, practicing for this very, very thing that happened last evening. And um, I, I don't know if practicing ever really plays out the way that we experience it when, when it occurs, because when we responded to this, the, these things grow so fast and can be so chaotic on the scene. We got into a very fast, rapid triage situation where we're having to move fast, not unlike a war zone, where you're having to decide who is viable, who who should we work on, who is unfortunately deceased on scene. And as everyone is well aware, unfortunately, people did lose their lives last night there. And it impacts everyone who responds, not just the, the family and friends and community members who, um, you know, those, those are their loved ones and the, the people who were present, but also those first responders who are going. It's just a very sad and traumatic thing. And unfortunately, Sacramento on, you know, at 2 a.m. downtown has become a very uh, at times can be very violent. And um, it's not unfamiliar for our fire department to respond to these areas dealing with assaults and shootings and stabbings. And um, I'm hopeful for the, the future as we move forward that we can get a little bit more peace uh, to the downtown in those early morning hours. Uh, Captain, you talk about being on duty last night. And again, as Bill mentioned, and as you said, the irony of, tra of training for a mass casualty event. And there is one last night. As you get down to 10th and L Street, you describe it as a war zone. You immediately go to work. Sacramento Fire arriving and administering CPR to the victims within 10 minutes of the shooting. What is the toll? What is the psychological toll that takes place not only on firefighters, but police officers, these first responders in a multiple casualty event? And what, if any, psychological logical help might you give to your rank and file going this week as they recover from what they've seen? The toll can be great. Early on in my career and, and years prior to that, we didn't have a very good system in place to help our first responders. And now we have more of that first responders to the first responder system, if you will. Uh, we, we call, um, some people term it the behavioral health unit. It's resources for our firefighters, and, and I, I imagine law enforcement has the same resources available now, because uh, it's well known that if we don't deal with these things uh, right after these types of events, um, it, it can be with them for the length of their career, and it can have real-world impacts to their uh, social, personal lives, and uh, professional uh, lives moving forward. So when we go to these things, we all go because of our training, we can fall back on it and we can quickly deal with the, the incident as it's occurring. Um, and a lot of times you go away not realizing because the adrenaline rush, it doesn't settle in right away of what you just experienced. And Captain Wade, as a follow-up, what is the impact on your family? Well, the, the, yeah, the families, that's part of that behavioral health um, piece of this is uh, when we come home, like I just got off shift this morning and uh, we were up pretty much all night. And now I come home and I, you have to shift into uh, husband and uh, father mode and um, expected to do the normal things. Like I was just bringing trash cans in uh, to the side of the house. And sometimes after you've uh, experienced sleep deprivation and experienced some traumatic things, getting back into that normal and, and needing a decompression mode is necessary. Um, and that's why we have the resources available for people to be able to talk these things through, um, figure out some healthy ways to deal with um, these traumatic episodes that were not uncommon for us to respond to now. It's hard to find the words uh, to describe what everyone had to deal with last night, and uh, we're hopeful for a, a better future as this fire department continues to serve the city of Sacramento. You'll hug your wife and kids a different way today, won't you? Yeah, well, I think anytime we come home from shift, I know as I've gotten older in my career that I am appreciative every time I come home safe and healthy. Uh, there's too many times this year that I've gone to funerals for firefighters that uh, have lost their lives, um, just like our law enforcement brothers and sisters experience it all too 
uh, regularly. Um, these are dangerous professions, and uh, we, we do it because it's a calling. Uh, we will continue to show up, um, staff these fire departments and these fire engines and, and ambulances and come out and serve these uh, citizens. They, they, they deserve it. And, uh, you know, uh, as we move forward, I know I've been saying the same thing, but um, it sure would be nice to get a little bit more sleep for the Sacramento Fire Department on the weekends um, and uh, people could go out and celebrate in a very uh, non-confrontational way with each other. Captain uh, Keith Wade, uh, Sacramento Fire, we can't thank you enough for joining us today. This is KFBK News Radio continuing coverage. Sacramento Police and the Sheriff's Office, Sacramento Fire, remain on the scene. Now the FBI is providing whatever resources that Sacramento Police may need. Routine police matters today. That's being held uh, handled by the Sacramento Sheriff and Elk Grove PD. A large portion of downtown Sacramento remains closed from the west side of Cesar Chavez Park over to the edge of Capitol Park, 9th to 13th streets between J and L. Something that's ancillary is traffic. Even on a Sunday morning, traffic in downtown Sacramento is backed up. The detour is 12th down to J over to 15th. Let's go live to the press conference now and Mayor Steinberg. Who perpetrated this uh, awful crime uh, this morning to be able to report and to report quickly um, so that the police can uh, investigate and arrest uh, those responsible and hold them uh, accountable. We've been asked to stop answering yeah. questions. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna leave it there. Thank you all very much. Appreciate Breaking it. news first on KFBK News Radio. It's 11:31. I'm Bill White on KFBK News Radio. Our continuing coverage: mass shooting early this morning downtown Sacramento. Let's get the very latest from KFBK's John Harper. John and the timeline starting at 2 a.m. The first reports of a shooting in downtown Sacramento. 2:01 a.m. Sacramento police respond: six dead, ten wounded. The location: the 1,000 block of K Street. The shooting scene strewn across at least two city blocks. Police also investigating at 12th and K Street. Right now, 9th the 13th streets between J and L remains closed. Just moments ago, you heard live coverage of a news conference. Our first real comments on uh, the shooting that happened overnight, the mass shooting that happened overnight. Mayor Daryl Steinberg. This is a senseless and unacceptable tragedy. And I emphasize the word unacceptable. Thoughts and prayers, of course, are appropriate for the victims and their families and the people who are still uh, who are fighting for their lives now in the hospital but thoughts and prayers are not nearly enough we must do more as a city as a state and as a nation Mayor Steinberg also assuring those who are listening to the news conference and you that Sacramento remains a safe place to go. This is not unique to Sacramento. We unfortunately see these kinds of tragedies happen, unacceptable tragedies happen throughout the country. Six dead, ten wounded. The timeline with first reports of a shooting right after two this morning at 2.01 a.m. Sacramento police go into high gear. All units report to the scene at 2.08. Sacramento fire already administering CPR to victims at 2.00. 11. The first reports of multiple deaths coming in at 222. Sacramento police recover a gun, the weapon, which is believed to be involved in this shooting. That gun recovered next door to Mother's Restaurant. And then later on, more victims found on J Street at 246 a.m. with some of those victims walking into local hospitals. Five were admitted to UC Davis. We don't know their conditions right now. A number of evidence markers are in the area. Again, this is in the 1000 block of K Street with evidence markers mostly outside the restaurant located in the Citizen Hotel. number of city council people joining Mayor Steinberg in the news conference just moments ago. Her district is downtown and emotional. Katie Valenzuela. Sorry, it's okay. I stand with you. At 2.30 this morning, I got the call that no elected official wants to get. And you'll have to excuse me for being emotional because I haven't really slept since. A call that I've gotten too many times in the 15 months that I've been in office. That there had been another incident of gun violence in my district, that more people had been killed. So I'm heartbroken and I'm outraged. I'm outraged. 
very emotional Katie Valenzuela at the news conference just moments ago that you heard here live on News Radio KFBK. Also, we know from Sacramento police that the re, the area remains, the investigation remains live, active, and fluid. The shooter is not in custody. They have recovered a gun, which they uh, suppose was involved in this shooting. Right now, police are reviewing any security camera footage from a number of restaurants and nightclubs and businesses in the area. Again, six dead, ten wounded in this shooting in downtown Sacramento this morning. And we'll continue to update the situation, bring you more highlights from this news conference that just happened just moments ago as we await to hear from Sacramento Police Chief Kathy Lester in a news conference, which uh, we're hopeful will begin not too shortly. We'll give you continuing coverage right here on on KFBK, Sacramento's News Radio. All right, John Harper, thank you. And the KFBK Newsroom keeping us updated. 11.36 now, our time Sunday morning. Uh, we've been with you uh, early morning hours. KFBK's coverage of the shooting aftermath continued through the remainder of Sunday, with live news conferences carried in their entirety. And updates from John Bernice and Jensen Rader in the KFBK Newsroom. From California's capital city, KFBK News Radio. Update. More reaction to last night's deadly shooting in Sacramento. Six people are dead, up to 16 others injured after shots rang out around 2 a.m. It happened outside El Santo Restaurant. Mayor Daryl Steinberg. This senseless epidemic of gun violence must be addressed. DA Anne-Marie Schubert says it's early in the investigation, but her office is ready to help. If and when an arrest occurs, we're going to do everything we can to, to fully hold these individuals accountable um, and prosecute them fully. The situation on the scene was challenging. Sacramento Fire Captain Keith Wade. We had around 50 firefighters and command staff that um, responded with our brothers and sisters in law enforcement. Sacramento police are hunting for whoever opened fire. California Governor Gavin Newsom issuing a statement saying, sadly, we once again mourn the lives lost and for those injured in yet another horrendous act of gun violence. John Bernizzi, KFBK News Radio. Breaking news first on KFBK, Sacramento's News Radio, 93.1 FM, 1530 AM, and everywhere on the iHeartRadio app.